Hey everyone, this is Zach from the DIYGolfer.com and in today's video I'm super excited to share a little bit of par 3 strategy and how you can play par 3's a lot smarter. Be sure to stick around till the end of the video because on this course we're going to see some par 3's that present some unique challenges that will be awesome learning opportunities for us. Starting right out of the gates we have a pretty easy straightforward par 3. There's 165 yards um, not a whole lot of elevation change and I was really just hitting an 8 iron back to the flag came a little short because it was in the morning a little bit cold balls not traveling as far now the second par 3 is a super long one I had to hit a 3 iron into it and in this case there was not a whole lot of trouble around the green so I was shooting right at the flag but on longer par 3's something to think about is where the true center of the green is for you. It may not actually be the actual center of the green. I define it as the area that is going to present the least amount of trouble. So that may even be the fairway, a little strip of fairway short of the green that you can lay up to to make sure that you're not getting yourself into a ton of trouble. Now this next par three is a unique situation where we have a slanted green. A little bit downhill, but the most important part here is getting your distance right. And you can see I have not done that. I actually shot at this flag, which was back left. And by doing this, I got it wrong and put myself in a situation where I just had to hope that I got some good bounces. I did, did not convert that uh, par putt. But the key with these types of par 3's, and you're going to see this coming up on the next hole, this is almost the exact same setup, where you have a slanted green going from front right to back left, and the key here is to shoot the yardage to the middle of this green and aim at the middle of the green. And the reason for that is because of this mistake that I made right here. I was using the yardage to the back left pin, and because I flailed it out to the right, I had too much yardage on that slanted green and once again short sided myself and had almost no chip whatsoever without hitting some crazy type of flop shot. So when you're playing these slanted par threes where there's a different distance requirement for the different sections of the green, it's almost always the best idea to shoot the distance to the very middle and aim at the middle so that you have some leeway if you miss it right or miss it left. Now we're entering these last two par threes of the course, which are both severely downhill. And most golfers probably have a decent idea of how to play these, but the, the main key here is to get that distance right. And you're likely gonna have to hit one, two, or in extreme cases, three less clubs than you normally would from that distance. So for both of these par threes, I was clubbing down about two clubs in total and one thing in particular to note with these downhill elevation changes is that if you have any wind at play it's going to be a pronounced effect because the ball is going to be in the air for a long time so let's say you have the wind at your back you may even want to club down two three four maybe even five less clubs because that ball is going to be in the air and travel a long way with that wind at your back and before you go today, just want to let you know that in the description, there's a link to a free personalized practice plan. So be sure to check that out.